What's up everyone, it's your boy Danny Vega, aka Danny V, and WandaVision season finale just happened yesterday. I honestly watched it yesterday at 9am, but just a series of unfortunate events happened. I had a helicopter in my neighborhood for like three hours and it was in the footage because it's really loud in my studio. Unless you speak helicopter, there was no way I was going to show you that footage. It was like, skip, 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 skip. And then after that, when I finally left, didn't know my memory card was full, so in the middle of my review, just cut off abruptly so finally i can fill my review in peace so let's get right into it did i like the series finale did I like the entire series or did i think it was a big dumpster fire and accumulation let's find out in this episode Now before we start this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that little bell button for more future videos. And this is a big spoiler warning for you guys. This is your huge spoiler warning. If you don't want anything to be spoiled, get out while you can. Get out! Do it now! Get through the chopper! Alright, so WandaVision series finale. What did I think about it? Overall, I'm not gonna lie to you. I liked it. I thought it was okay. I mean, on an emotional level, it was a good wrap-up on an emotional level. However, there's a couple of rules in film and theater that I feel like just didn't apply to the series whatsoever. And what I mean is, is that there's a rule in film and theater that when you introduce characters, you need to use them. And we were introduced to a bunch of characters that didn't really play a big part. And what I mean is, you had Agatha's reveal in episode 7, which is two episodes before the series finale. You had Spectral Vision, okay? You had Photon. Everything happened that I feel, that's why I thought number seven was the best. Everything happened in episode seven. And while we had this uphill climb to the, get to the climax, I felt like in episode eight, it, it dipped down. And then in episode nine, it just kind of like stood in that state. But nonetheless, it was still cool. In the beginning, we start where we left off, you know, Agnes versus Wanda. She has the kids and then Wanda's kind of like, Kamehameha, and then Agnes, <laughs> that was like super 17 and just absorbing it in her body but what i found what was odd that it was similar to the other witches but i could understand with the other witches when they were shooting their magic and she was absorbing them and it looked like it took all their magic but the fact that wanda threw a little magic ball and then it withered her hand away i was kind of like that's odd but okay but i did really like the fact that when wanda pegged her with the car that you saw her feet in the house sticking out like the wicked witch of the west I lost it. I was like, I can't believe they did that. And then we see Spectral Vision come, and then she thinks it's regular Vision, even though he's all white. How do you not know the difference? <laughs> It's like the typical cliche that they don't know it's an evil version of that person, even though they look completely different. And they're like, oh my God, oh my God. And that's what happens. So he starts crushing her head and then we have our vision come in and hit him. Now, I love that fight between the two visions. I think it was the best fight in the series finale. I really thought that we would have more magic between Agatha and Wanda, but we didn't get really get that much. I thought it would be on a Doctor Strange level, like, all super crazy but it was nothing was too crazy but the vision fight man the fact that they're going through each other and trapping each other's bodies is just like it's almost like an old school kung fu movie when i was like huh, 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 huh. but yeah i was kind of confused because i originally thought that spectral vision was ordered to destroy wanda especially that he started crushing her head but then when vision comes in then it's like well i was sent here to destroy the vision and it's like wait a minute but you were just about to kill wanda what is happening right now i thought it would have been pretty cool Cool is that instead of having a one-on-one -on -one battle like he would be constantly trying to go attack Wanda and then we'll have Vision and Agatha trying to do away Spectral Vision and Spectral Vision is kind of like this big baddie and beating everybody up but nope that doesn't happen but what was cool was the whole ship paradox is just like well if you keep replacing the wood is it really still that ship the fact that when he came to the conclusion that if there were some remnants but also some new stuff they're both still vision and then he unlocks his mind remembers everything which is crazy but then leaves i mean this story was following west coast avengers pretty to the t with their own changes and then in west coast avengers spectral vision has no idea who the kids are wanted him split because he has no memories whatsoever i really thought it was going to end that way but in a sense we have vision back when vision 
ends up dying at the end, her vision when he ends up disappearing, it's not that much of an impact. I felt it on an emotional level. I was like, all right, cool. That's a good wrap up because she doesn't know spectral visions out there with all visions memories. But at the same time, it's like, oh, he'll be back. It's like you cry for two seconds. Like, oh wait, yeah, he's alive. Another thing is that you introduce Agatha Harkness in which they don't kill her. Thank God they don't kill her like other Marvel movies. I totally didn't like what they did with Whiplash, who was really Omega Red. He was in the movie for like two seconds and died. I felt that way with Spectral Vision. He was in the episode for like two seconds and dipped out. And then Agatha, you know, they have this battle for like two seconds and she's defeated. And the thing about her getting defeated so easily is that Wanda had no idea how to use magic. And then Agatha taught her and then that's how Wanda ended up defeating her. And the thing is though, is that even though it was kind of cool that like she's doing this whole setup and you know, she's throwing and it looks like she's missing, but she's not really missing. Kind of like a DBZ move, like Piccolo's Hell Zone grenade. Obviously she missed on purpose and it was to create ruins. But one of my subscribers commented on my last video and said, I'm tired of villains teaching the heroes how to defeat them. And I was like, Man, that makes a lot of sense. And it ended up happening. I was, <laughs> I was like, all right, well, he called it. So Shadow Breed, good job, man. That, that was awesome on your part. Even though it was kind of cool to see, you know, magic versus magic. Like I said, it wasn't on this grand scale that I thought it would be. And I get it because, you know, Wanda doesn't really know how to use magic. But that at the same time, when you saw her fighting with magic, she's doing stuff she never did before. Like, she disappeared. She teleported. And then she teleports behind Agatha and then goes into her mind, which I thought was really cool. It reminded me of like the Mangekyo Sharingan in Naruto because how they showed it. But at the same time, like, okay. I did like the fact though that she did trap Agatha in Westview, just leaving that door open for future stuff. Like Agatha could still be her teacher later down the road. And also it's the same thing with Monica Rambeau. She's turned into Photon or Spectrum or whatever her name is. I think it's going to be Photon, but she has this build up with Hayward. There's this intense build up between them through the entire series. Listen, there was more of an intense build up between Monica and Hayward than there was between Wanda and Agatha. And you think there's going to be a payoff at the end. Like, all right, here we go. Because, you know, Hayward's there. He entered and let's see what Photon's up to. No. For what? Just to have Darcy hit him with the truck is like, Enjoy your stay in prison. All she does is protect the kids, one, which, okay, which we get to see more of her powers. Awesome. And I get it that you're probably going to have, like, her own big thing in the movie, but at least you can give us more of that. Give us more of a taste. You already built this, like, mystery of, like, oh, what can she do? And you barely see it. So she could absorb bullets, which is awesome. Her eyes change color depending on the energy, which I said in my previous video, that was awesome too. But there was no payoff with that whatsoever. I felt like, damn dude, for real. And it's the same thing with Evan Peters Quicksilver. Okay, listen, fan theories aside, we were like, okay, what is up with Evan Peters? And he's the one that's just Ralph. Oh my God, who's Ralph? Evan Peters, and that's his real name. His name is Ralph Boner. It was the blandest dick joke. I like dick jokes as the next person, but that was just... And she's like, your name is Ralph Boner? And he's like, <laughs> Boner. I felt like I was watching an episode of Beavis and Butthead, a not funny one. It's like, <laughs> Boner. <laughs> yeah, there was no real payoff for Evan Peters. So he's not Quicksilver from another universe, and he was just an innocent bystander, like I said, and that she just put a spell on and it was his bees. What was really upsetting was is that you saw Monica's like, I'm gonna leave. And he's like, nope, Bink. and then she flew back and you're like, okay, right, this has to be so powerful. He legit flicked her and she fell. Nope, just beads, beads, beads. But there are a few things that I really did like. I love the fact that Wanda's crown as the Scarlet Witch came in energy form because in my last video, I was just like, man, they were really emphasizing this whole thing with Agnes. Like why didn't they just tell us? And I called it. I'm like, because they're gonna emphasize that's how Wanda's gonna end up doing in the episode. Called that. And sure enough, it did. Agatha's mom had the crown with her magic and then so did Wanda. Wanda had her Scarlet Witch crown. And then not only that, when it emphasized of Agatha absorbing everybody and just absorbing Wanda in this, she absorbed Agatha's power and yeah, I called that too. I like that, that again, they didn't kill her, but what would have been really cool is that because you know how Agatha made everyone else look like zombies and they died. It would have been really cool if Wanda was sucking all her energy and she turned old like the Agatha we know in the comic books. That would have been really cool. But yeah, and then the final Scarlet Witch outfit looked hella dope. It looked very similar to Michael Fassbender's Magneto outfit, which was great. The M house she had was fantastic and they gave her the hood 
just like in the comic. I was like, okay, this is good. This is great. And I like that they debuted some of the kids' powers. I'm super grateful they disappeared with the Hex. I tell you that much, man. I am so grateful for that because, again, I did not want the Young Avengers to happen so soon. And if there weren't going to be, you know, a piece of Mephisto Soul and stuff like that, I was like, ah, I really, you know, wasn't into that. But how they showcased them was great. They showed a little bit of their powers, you know, and you speed and wicked doing their thing, which was pretty cool. On top of that, the end. At the end, when she is reading through the dark hold and you hear them cry out mom save us that could totally leave the door open for mephisto actually coming back and tricking wanda and i like that concept i like that theory because the whole episode was basically like that nexus commercial you start off with depression you're accepting who you are you're accepting your destiny and then maybe more more depression and which actually happened like she goes and she gives up the one thing that she wanted most for the greater good especially after what agatha did when agatha just released everyone's mind and everyone's like oh my god this is so painful why and she's like shut up and then all of a sudden it chokes everyone and i was just like oh luckily no one was into bdsm because man could you imagine seeing that in a disneyland <laughs> daddy but yeah so you know she sees what she was becoming and then she let that go but at the same time though you see that she's reading the dark hold reading the dark magic she's going there and i love that because i said that before i would love to see her go off as a villain and it looks like it may happen she looks so evil which was fantastic when you become deep in the dark arts you may not even think twice you're like well found a different way to get my kids oh shit there's a price to pay for that too i love that i love that concept i really do and there were no big tie-ins like i wanted dr strange to show up my challenge with this is the same challenge that i had with other marvel movies you have all these superheroes and you don't mention where the other heroes are at but you're in the same city or whatever and this big thing is happening but no mention of the other heroes whatsoever not even a glimpse no one comes to the rescue when you're in trouble that is ridiculous if i'm not mistaken in far from home when they asked about dr strange they're like well he's taking care of something that's cool but previously like in iron man 2 and 3 and other marvel movies is just like wait where's everybody else you're telling me the hulk thor nobody nobody what's happening right now and it's the same thing in endgame i love that they emphasize that when they were talking about the sorceress supreme they're like wait why didn't she help anybody but then you see that she was protecting the building in new york but just not interfering good great she probably had knowledge that they were gonna win anyway so she probably didn't need to jump in i like that but in this one nothing nobody it's <laughs> not one and you would think that dr strange the sorcerer supreme that's the protector of this whole earth and the magic and the dimensions and everything else didn't even make a cameo i'm talking about didn't even have an end credit scene of just him going hmm gotta do something about that nothing and i get it maybe she is the villain in multiverse of madness cool but like there's nothing to even say that we don't know if spectral vision or anybody else is going to be in this multiverse of madness except for the cast that they just showed it's just like okay but what about these guys then we got the scroll that was basically talking to monica about i'm guessing nick fury up in the sword space station i guess that's going to tie into either secret invasion or captain marvel 2 but yeah i would like to at least some sort of connection but like i said i liked it they wrapped it all up you know it was heartfelt again i feel like it could be more heartfelt if vision ended up dying and spectral vision like the comics had no idea who wanda was and just becomes a new vision i would have liked that because that would have made me be like oh my god especially after she's like you're part of the mind stone that lives in me but also you're my love oh forget it but because it didn't happen i honestly was like okay that's cool i feel it awesome so yeah to wrap it all up in my final thoughts i mean i think the series was okay if you did the accumulation of the time limit of the series it's like a full length movie man and the fact that the climax happened at episode seven which was legit not that long before the actual finale you would be past in a full length feature you would be past the middle which that incline should have been in the middle to hit your climax and then have your ending i felt like it was too close and then boop, not enough for me but like i said it didn't totally ruin it because i'm a comic book geek i loved all the easter eggs i loved everything that they showed it's a filler episode it's a legit anime filler episode it's like the garlic jr saga in dragon ball z it was a fantastic saga nothing to do with the main series and you could have done without it that's how i felt about this show you could easily just go ahead and talked about this but to be fair 
there, on the other hand, I like that the show's emphasis was really on just retconning Wanda's story. And I do like that because it made her more powerful and much closer to the comics. And I get it too. Yeah, fan theories really hyped us up. A lot of us did. Paul Bettany is the king of trolls. I thought the Spider-Man crew was trolls with the whole, you know, title of the third movie. But no Paul Bettany, man, with the whole like, ah, I wanted to work with this actor all along. But to be fair, again, in acting, it's really, really hard. It's really hard to act with someone and at least with someone you can feed off of but when you're acting by yourself that is on a totally different level think about it you're talking to a person that's probably in a green suit and you're getting no reaction no emotional so all of that is in your head like this is how i would say to this because i'm going to react that way and i'm going to react this way and da -da -da -da. it's just a mind fucked honestly it's just a mind fuck the fact that he really thought that it was fantastic that's cool man give yourself a pat on the back so yes you're a cheeky bastard but still i think that was awesome he did a fantastic job and i give him all the credit that he deserves now but with the whole thing of the interview with elizabeth olsen saying yes this is why you don't say yes to the luke skywalker cameo bs it's because you can honestly with grace like i said in my last video you can honestly with grace be like no that's not the case and then tell him what the case is and that's it but for us to be hyped about all this jazz you know really did hamper it but at the same time though to be fair is that it goes to show how creative we all are and our love for marvel and these comic books i think it's a fantastic thing all our theories were so great that we had the director go oh god i hope they're not disappointed which by the way if anyone ever says that that i hope you're not disappointed lower your expectations because that's never a good sign it goes to show that our creative minds are so great in thinking outside of the box that we have big time directors that are going shit why didn't i think of that again we got what we got which was a good wrap up to me again i i would like to see something better but overall i think it ended good and i can't wait for falcon and winter soldier so we're gonna see with that so those are my thoughts let me know what you thought about the entire series and the series finale down below in the comments and as always if you like this video don't forget to like subscribe and hit that little bell button for more future videos i love you be safe talk to you soon <laughs>